by uh, the uh, Department of Social Work Shift 2. And they've uh, really put together a wonderful uh, series of uh, webinars last uh, uh, in the series. And in this series, they were, they've looked at the new normal. They are looking at the new normal. And I think it's an important uh, series of topics that we're looking at, particularly for media, entertainment, and development in education and so on. Um, any new uh, change in society brings forward um, some new things that we can look forward to, but also certain things that are not desirable. And at the end, uh, from the social perspective, I think uh, any new novel should ensure that justice is there. It should ensure that any new normal, the marginalized are included. Any new normal, I think we should look forward to a new normal that doesn't exclude anybody, that doesn't disturb a certain status quo that is required for society to be equal and just. I think uh, we need to deliberate on this. There are pros and cons that we'll probably be looking at in all these sectors uh, in while we are debating on the new normal. And I'm delighted that we have a very good set of people who are uh, going to facilitate in the today's session as well as in the coming sessions. Uh, I particularly welcome Mr. Kulisegan for this session on behalf of Madara School of Social Work. Um, I'm really pleased that the department has put together this series and uh, feel honored that the World Vision is uh, partnering with us. Uh, they are a great partner even otherwise with us for our internships and uh, our placements and also in the field where we have done a couple of studies along with them. Uh, we're delighted uh, about um, the presence of um, Shanti Hauper with us. Uh, we are honored by the presence of all the participants also. Uh, so I wish all the best for this webinar series and let us look forward to a great uh, session of learning as well as a series of learning. Go to the organizers now. Thank you, sir. I deem it a privilege to introduce our guest speaker for the day. Our guest speaker, Mr. Arvind Gunashekar, is the correspondent of NDTV New Delhi. He has six years of experience in broadcast media. He has worked in Tandi TV for nearly five years as a Delhi correspondent before joining NDTV New Delhi. He has scooped the midnight CBI coup in 2018. He is also the first generation postgraduate with a master's in international relations from the prestigious Jawaharlal Nehru University. We are very pleased to have you with us today, sir. We request you to take over the session. Hi, good morning to one and all. I think my audio is uh, very much audible and it's clear to one and all. So uh, at the outset, let me make it clear. Uh, it, it's my privilege and also I'm thankful to the organizers of Metro School of Social Work uh, for inviting me uh, as part of this wonderful series. So my topic, the topic that I would be focusing on today is, is the new normal in media uh, in, in the time of COVID-19. So this is a topic that I would be speaking on today that I would be touching upon today. So uh, it's, it's not a more, more like a formal interaction. It's like a two-way learning because like, like if you had seen my profile that has been given just a few seconds back, so I, have, I don't have much of an experience. So it's, it's a two-way interaction. It will be a two-way learning that I would be, I would be more uh, learning from you all than the, uh, vice versa. So let me start. So what has COVID-19 has, has, what did actually COVID-19 bring to media field? In fact, media, uh, media like you know that media is of two kinds. One is uh, entertainment media and second one is a news media. So I'm basically from a news media like my profile said. So what has COVID-19 done to news media? Because news media was already in a very bad shape because news media started losing their credibility. Uh, people, uh, people started questioning the credibility of most of the media, most of the news. In fact, whatever it is being delivered by across any media, any news media. So COVID-19 is, is like a death knell uh, for media, especially for the news media. It is, it, it, it's, a, it's a last uh, signal that news media should actually wake up and should see what's happening around. 
though though covid 19 has brought so many difficulties uh, in terms of logistics in terms of access, accessibility to information or to anything but i would say that covid 19 is also an opportunity not not in terms of the pandemic not in terms of medical uh, pandemic that i'm speaking about but covid 19 is an opportunity that has that it's, it's a signal that to everyone not just for not just for news media or not just for any media it, it, it's a signal for everyone to see to check what's exactly happening around because we have been we are running non-stop we are we, there's no point for us to stop to sit uh, and to uh, and, and, and even to realize what's happening around us but this covid 19 period this this period of lockdown and period of all other things that has actually given us a time to sit and to and to and to do an, a, a do an, a proper interpretation of what is happening around. So this, in a way, it has actually passed the uh, non-stopping or the fast rate of which the media, not even a citizen, is running. So they have given it has passed and it has given us that particular time to actually think about. So uh, the COVID has brought so many changes to the media field with the way of social distancing, with the way of how we deliver news how we consume news news also earlier we used to go to field we used to gather information we used to go and meet our sources and then we used to get the information and then we used to come and disseminate we used to deliver the news but because of the restrictions because of social distancing and because of so many other restrictions that the accessibility to our sources to the place where the news events are happening that has been, become difficult so we, uh, even us as uh, people even as people like us who are collecting the news even we have so many restrictions that the we are confined to a limited space within that limited space we have to uh, gather the news and we have to also cross check whether the information is right before uh, delivering it on air before giving it before publishing it so i would say at the outset even if you could look at my uh, physical appearance also it's, it's been days since i even trimmed so uh, even we are uh, confined this, uh, to this our own room in fact we can't even go to office because office has been even the people the accessibility to office is also limited because they don't want people who go out who collect the news to get back and then they don't want more risk factor so even that has been confined so in a way covid has had an adverse impact on the way we deliver on the way we collect news but it has actually helped uh, in a way uh, how we deliver the news because the news consumer the the consume of news or the consume of any media is actually increasing that's what the tv ratings that's what the trp rating or the time rating is showing that people nowadays are uh, seeing more uh, television they are uh, they are uh, opting for a for a uh, for a confirmed news uh, from news channel so in a way it's a boon but also with the restrictions it is uh, becoming difficult so not just indian media particularly indian media lost uh, indian media is in the graph is in the trend of losing its credibility earlier there was a time whatever uh, people read on newspaper whatever people read on tv channel listen uh, news on tv channel they used to believe us they they used to trust us blindly they used to think that if we give a news uh, there was a time if we give any information people used to trust and people people used to believe but now the credibility is is at all time low people are in fact questioning each and every news with the with the introduction with the spread of social media uh, people start people are more relying on social media in fact with twitter with whatsapp with facebook everyone is a content creator now everyone is creating their own news everyone is capturing what's happening around and they are disseminating as a news to a larger audience so in that way it's it's bit a uh, it's a bit a challenging period for media to remain relevant to remain significant being relevant is, is indeed uh, an existential crisis for media at this particular point of time because everyone has become a uh, content creator everyone is consuming everyone is disseminating everyone is publishing news or information from their own end sitting in their own homes with a with a mobile phone that they, they are easily able to disseminate an information that what they are seeing and they are also the way that people consume news is also uh, changing rapidly so in a way it's a very uh, it's a very tough and challenging time for media especially for the news media to stay relevant and also to stay significant coming to uh, another very important point not just on this covid 19 even before covid 19 media was going through a rapid change in fact with, with, with like i mentioned with the social media and with also all this micro uh, uh, social sites so a uh, media also slowly uh, shifted towards a digital uh, uh, digital 
uh, a platform like uh, for for example for ndtv ndtv has ndtv has two news channel one ndtv english and also we also have an ndtv hindi channel but uh, even when when you compare ndtv hindi and english news channel our reach uh, from our ndtv.com our website is more way more than our tv and our uh, both about uh, in the combined of both english and hindi channel so in that way uh people the new media people they they want they don't have tv they you can't expect a person who goes to office or a person who goes to college or a person who goes for any other profession for any other work you can't expect that person to stick to a tv to see what's happening around so now with the with with mobile with a handy mobile in their hand so they tend to uh, uh, consume news through that particular platform through that particular device so even uh, media is also slowly changing from the mainstream uh, 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 you earlier way of tv or a, or a more formal way of news dissemination to a more informal way or not just more informal way to a more easily accessible way for the consumers so that's why even most of the channels are also slowly shifting towards a uh, uh, digital format including uh, uh, what including uh, whatsapp also including where they are uh, where they are sharing the news including twitter etc so that uh, that is one in a particular point that even before covid we saw this change rapid change but covid has actually shown us that this is the new normal that no more mainstream mainstream media if we still stick to this uh, studios if we still stick to the studios with four panelists from 8 to 10 pm shouting at one another and then and then coming up with random topics media will not stay relevant media has to get out because everyone at this particular point of time every citizen with a mobile phone is a content creator so in order to stay relevant in order to stay significant stay significant media has to come out of their own uh, shelter their own four into four rooms and then they have to get on field they have to speak to the people that's how media that's how this particular covid 19 has actually woken most of the media people earlier all the editors all the big anchors they used to confine themselves to their own studios to their own studios where they would be bringing four people they would be talking one over another but now it has shown us no this way people will not trust us we will be we cannot continue like this anymore that's why we could see most of the anchors most of the reporters most of the senior journalists also getting to the field speaking to the common man i think i i can say this in tamil also munadi ela vandu oru oru news na vandu ennikume oru saamaniyanoda kurala tha vandu oru patrikayo oru oru oodagamo irundirukku adu adunala dhaan oodagam ivlo oru oru madhippu mikka oru 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 porla maar maatra oru porla maari vanduchuna adu kaaranam vandu media ennikume oodagam ennikume vandu oru oru saamaniyanoda kurala irundha kaalathinal dhaan but தற்போதைய காலகட்டத்திற்கு சாமானியரோட குரலா இருந்ததை தாண்டி இப்ப வந்து அதிகாரமிக்க ஒரு ஒரு சக்தி வாய்ந்த ஆட்களோட ஒரு ஒரு குரலா மீடியா மாறிட்டு வரங்காட்டிதான் பொதுமக்களுக்கும் மீடியா மேல இருக்கிற ஒரு ஊடகத்து மேல இருக்கிற அந்த ஒரு நம்பிக்கை அந்த ஒரு மதிப்பு குறைஞ்சிட்டு வருது முன்னாடி எல்லாம் ஒரு பத்திரிகையாளர்னு சொல்லி ஒரு இடத்துக்கு போனோம்னா ஆஹ் பொதுவா அதிகாரத்தில் இருக்கிறவங்க அல்லது காவல்துறையோ அல்லது மற்றவர்களோ வந்து யார் யாரெல்லாம் வந்து தங்களுக்கு ஒரு பிரச்சனை வந்துடும் மீடியா இந்த இடத்துக்கு வந்துச்சுன்னா தங்களோட உண்மைகள் வெளியே வந்துடும் சொல்லி யார் யாரெல்லாம் எங்களை தடுப்பாங்களோ அது வந்து ஒரு அதிகாரமிக்க ஒரு ஒரு எஸ்டாப்ளிஷ்மெண்ட் ஒரு ஆட்களா மட்டும்தான் இருந்தாங்க பட் கடந்த ஒரு சில ஆண்டுகளாகவே நாங்க என்ன பாக்குறோம்னா பொதுமக்கள் கூட ஒரு சில இடத்துல வந்து மீடியா ஆட்களை உள்ள நுழைய விடுறது இல்லை இன்ஃபேக்ட் ஐ ஐ வுட் கிவ் மை ஓன் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஐ திங்க் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் யூ ஆல் வில் பி அவேர் வாட் ஹேப்பன் டூரிங் த ஆன்டி சிட்டிசன்ஷிப் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆக்ட் ப்ரோட்டஸ்ட் ஸோ வென் வென் வி வென் டு ஜாமியா யூனிவர்சிட்டி ஜாமியா ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் தே கேம் அவுட் ஆஃப் த யூனிவர்சிட்டி தே ஸ்டேஜ் த கண்டினியூஸ் ப்ரொட்டஸ்ட் அகேன்ஸ்ட் திஸ் சிட்டிசன்ஷிப் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆக்ட் மோர் தன் thousand students they came out of the university and they were uh, demonstrating they were staging a continuous protest so at that particular point of time what we witnessed is that most of the students they didn't let uh, some of the media i don't want to name those media channels so some i don't want to name those media but but most of these channels were not even allowed to enter anywhere there. but good that it's it's not a, a it's not a mere a proud movement for people from ndtv but but people did allow us uh, when when we say that we are from ndtv people did allow us to enter and people did speak to us but uh, but even I, i i did see many of the media channel they were not even allowed inside even students they did not allow inside so that uh, one thing that clearly showed us that it, it it's a warning signal for media per se because or kurulattravargalin kurala irukkira varaikkum da media oodagam vandu avingaloda unnathamana paniyai seiya mudiyum குரலற்றவர்களோட குரலா இருந்து மாறி அதிகாரமிக்கவர்களோட குரலா மாறிட்டு வந்தோம்னா ஒரு 
உண்மை மக்கள் அஹ் ஊடகத்தின் மீது வைத்திருக்க நம்பிக்கை வந்து குறைய குறையறக்கான வாய்ப்பு அதிகமாகும் அதுதான் இப்ப நம்ம பார்த்துட்டு வரோம் காரணம் என்னன்னா குரலற்றவர்களுக்கு தான் நம்ம குரலா இருக்கணும் ஊடகத்தோட வேலை என்ன நடக்குது அரசாங்கமோ அல்லது அதிகாரத்தில் இருப்பவங்களோ பவர்ல இருக்கிறவங்களோ எதை அதெல்லாம் மறைக்க நினைக்கிறாங்களோ அதை வெளிச்சத்துக்கு கொண்டு வர்றதான் ஊடகத்தோட பணியா இருக்கணும் அதுதான் ஊடகத்தோட பணியா முத முதல்ல கொண்டு வரப்பட்டுச்சு அதனாலதான் மக்கள் ஊடகத்தின் மேல அவ்வளவு பெரிய நம்பிக்கையில வந்து எல்லாரும் நியூஸ் பேப்பரையோ டிவியில என்ன சொன்னாலும் நம்ப ஆரம்பிச்சாங்க நான் என் வீட்டுல நான் ரொம்ப ஃப்ரங்கா சொல்றேன் ஐ டோன்ட் திங்க் சோ இஃப் ஐ சே சம்திங் அட் திஸ் ஏஜ் நாட் ஈவன் மை மை ஓன் சிப்ளிங்ஸ் நாட் ஈவன் மை ஓன் சிஸ்டர்ஸ் நாட் ஈவன் மை ஓன் பிரதர் not even my parents would listen to me but if i come on screen if i say something people who don't even know me they listen to me because as a journalist people have a respect people believe us whatever we give it but there have been times that even media has become very irresponsible media has, media has also been used as a tool uh, for 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 this communal for for any other agenda that's what this a particular time what we are now is the most crucial time period not just for media but as a country as a whole this is a most polarized uh, era this is a most polarized period that india has ever seen communally we are very much charged that resulted in the delhi rights that what we witnessed the shameful incident in the national capital just 2 to 3 months back that is in february what we witnessed was a shameful act that's the most shame thing that one can ever see in a nation like india which is a, which is a heterogeneous we, we used to call ourselves in unity in diversity but that diversity that the that the place for diversification is not it's shrinking because we are communally polarized we are communally very much charged we are not here to pinpoint that this people in power is actually doing it no but point is even as a common citizen that that tolerance that நம் நம் ஊர்ல வந்து ஒரு எம்மதமும் சம்மதம் அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு ஒரு ரொம்ப ஒரு அழகான ஒரு வாக்கியம் இருக்கு பட் அது நம்ம ஊர்ல தான் அது வந்து இன்னமும் தமிழ்நாடு இன்னமும் சவுத் இந்தியா ஐ உட் ஐ உட் ப்ரௌட்லி சே தட் ஐ எம் ஃப்ரம் தமிழ்நாடு ஈவன் டுடே இன் டெல்லி பிகாஸ் வி ஆர் நாட் கம்யூனலி சேலஞ்ச் வி ஆர் நாட் கம்யூனலி சார்ஜ் வி ஆர் நாட் கம்யூனலி போலரைஸ்ட் ஹவு லைக் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த நார்த் இந்தியா இஸ் லைக் ஐ உட் கிவ் அ பர்சனல் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் வாட் ஹேப்பன் சோ ஆன் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபிஃப்த் ஐ திங்க் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் யூ ஆல் will be our that what happened in delhi on 24 25 and 26 so when trump was in india so post that uh, subsequent the very next two to three days we saw we literally saw mob lynching we literally saw blood bath in the national capital more than 100 people died in that particular clash so i a part of ndtv so uh, on 25th i went to a place in the northeast delhi where the entire violence was taking place so after covering two to three place where uh, most of the minority people were attacked mostly minority mostly from one community was attacked so uh, we were actually moving towards meet nagar so it's it's a fly over it's, it's it's very much in the It, it, we can't even call it as a some uh, a remote place it's it's very much in the center of heart of the city in the northeast delhi so we were coming back me along with my colleague so that's why we saw a group of men around around uh, 50 to 100 trying to uh, demolish trying to destroy a, a religious site so i don't want to name that religious site also uh, so uh, on a way back so we we saw that happening so we parked our car so uh, two of my colleague uh, from uh, one from my own channel from hindi channel other one from uh, cnn news eight so uh, we three we started moving towards that particular place where this entire even where this entire uh, uh, this uh, demolition this destruction this mob is trying to destroy that building so when we were trying to move there uh, when we were trying to walk and along with that flyover to go to get a clear picture of what's happening there we did see three to four policemen coming along with some 10 to 15 people the policemen when they saw this this particular mob attacking this particular site they did not even care to raise their voice they took a u10 and they they went back in the wrong road so v3 um, the letting our our own self so we started moving towards it and all of a sudden a person started approaching us and the, uh, what is more interesting is that even before me because i was walking behind those two people because i had my mobile on my pocket so i was trying to record what exactly is happening because that's the duty of a journalist so uh, two of my colleague they were actually moving forward some 10 to 15 meters ahead of me so that particular person he crossed those two people and he came and he held my uh, shirt and then he called all those people that's where people actually they bashed me and i had and i lost uh, three to four of my teeth so uh, that's a very harrowing experience but what i would point here is that if he if he thought that all these three because me and along two of my colleague if he had thought that all these three people are or uh, uh, some unknown face but why didn't he touch uh, the two other people who are walking in front of me why did he cross them and then why did he come and catch me because 
after uh, even i had to give a thought of myself then i spoke to the people there after the entire incident that's when i got to know because i was wearing a black shirt he thought with a beard and also black shirt he thought that i am from muslim community i'm 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 from this particular community that's why he called he called all those people and they started attacking me without even asking what's my name without even asking anything th this is what i'm saying our at this particular point of time our communities our society is so much communally charged that we are we are not even sane we are not even thinking what's happening we are not even giving a thought that what's happening with anyone whatever they say whatever fake news whatever the rumor whatever speculation that is being spread we are charged and then we are taking law into our own hands so that resulted in the horrific delhi riots where we saw more than 100 people getting killed but what happened post that has has there been any change i don't see any change even now it's still the same even now we could see on social media we could see everywhere even for this corona pandemic I, I would say with shame, I would say even most of the media people also uh, also got in hand and glove with this establishment. They also uh, spread this narrative of uh, targeting one particular community even for this pandemic, even for this pandemic, this COVID-19. We gave a political, we, we, we gave a religious color. We, we targeted one, one particular community saying that they are the spreaders without even thinking what exactly happened. It's not just one event that Nizamuddin, there was so many events that was happening all across the country. Even the Home Minister had a political event two days back, two days before the entire, when Nizamuddin event uh, happened on May 5th, March 15th, two or uh, three days back, even uh, there was a government event in Jharkhand. So this is one incident, this is just an accident, but but that's how this society has come to thank with shame we have to say that even media is even media is exaggerating even media is being used as a tool to to to, to divide the society based on religious line based on based on political line based on everything that's why it, it, it's a wake up call for media that media should learn should should bring us act together should should realize that what is the need of a media media's need is not to be a voice of a power voice of an establishment because because for those in power they have their own voice because they they can be easily heard but the role of a media is always to stand with a common person to stand with common people because that's where that's that's the duty of a media or Society a pirate society a polarized Mundi, other political other I am theatre, Asaparangliko, or media on the road of Mundi, and Nikime on the or Tula Maria Koda than Garana, Yenoda or Tanipatakate, either over media at Kalume, Mundi, the Wunarono, Wunanduta, Warangan, Nanikram, because there was a time from twenty fourteen Lunduda and the Peria Matrangal, Namasandu, in fact, now we know over. Important on our election commissioner, lower election commission, lower fifty six Amba the Ambati and Jivasama or Paniatan or Vande or even our retired Anna the Kapramo election commission on the they they brought they again they got them in contract, they got them on contract, they kept him as a consultant and legal consultant. So when I was speaking to that particular gentleman, that particular officer, so I asked him that that somewhere in 2017 2018, so I asked him. So that that was a time. So uh, when uh, Tamil Nadu also saw several political development, we also saw back to back uh, bipoles were again money power. What uh, to So I asked this gentleman. So what would be the biggest challenge of the uh, election commission in holding elections uh, in the future uh, in the future period? So when I asked him. He, so I thought that he would be saying that money and muscle power will be the biggest challenge the election commission would be facing in this country. But no, to my surprise, he told me uh, election campaigns based on religion's line, religious line will be the most uh, difficult uh, thing that the election commission would be facing in 2019 election. Like the gentleman said in 2018, exactly we saw in 2019. Again, uh, uh, election campaign based on religious line we saw we saw almost everywhere even in delhi we saw in delhi elections we, we saw it worse we saw even even ministers even those in power giving all this communal slogans all this making of uh, because that's where it has it has come to very it has come to easy it has, it has become easy for all those people in power just to just to instigate that uh, that uh, religious sentiment 
uh, in people minds and then divide the society uh, divide the society based on majority and minority get the votes of majority and come back to power so this this is the new way that the that the people in power all those political executives are actually uh, opting for so they are making it easy for themselves but as a media it's our accountability media should have hold them accountable when a, when a union uh, when a union minister when the minister of state for finance when he came, when he comes out to a public gathering when he makes all this all this uh, random statement so uh, so this is where so this is where things get actually difficult so when this particular minister of state gave this uh, gave this uh, communal slogan media should have hold them media should have held them accountable but alas media did not do it in fact media media held them make all those random statement even in the name of uh, justifying defending his own statement we gave him platform again they came again they made it worse we saw two people very close to this uh, particular political establishment making very religious very very polarizing comment that led to the entire delhi rights so media's role media has to uh, has to realize media has to come to this their their own thinking that they should self uh re re regulate themselves they should not give a platform all this because even now in the move at 8 to 10 pm every day what we are seeing is one versus another one uh, one community versus another one religion versus another that's how media is slowly moving towards helping those in power instead of our job is to hold people in uh, our job is to hold people in power accountable but instead of doing that media has uh, diverted from that and media has become a tool for those in power to spread their narrative so that's where media has to bring their act together and this covid it has it has shown uh, it, it it it's a warning signal for most of the people most of the media organizations because advertisements are reducing even because most of the industries most of the factories most of the economic activity is not happening so that the revenue for media is also slipping down that's why we are seeing most of layoff in many of the media sector in, in fact most of the channels have even come up with layoff they have also reduced the salary the compensation also so it, it's a signal that unless or until media gets their act together they change from a more towards power to again back to those commoner media it, it, it's a very difficult time ahead for media so i think i have spoken for some 30 odd minutes so any questions from your side thank you so much sir uh so now we can go to the question answer session. So we have a question, sir. Uh, so this participants ask, uh, do you think the media is showing the news exactly and how to find the authenticity of the news? Okay, so what is the news? News is just an information. Our job, because we are not a news creators, we are just a messenger. We 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 collect, we gather a news, we gather an information from one particular point, one particular place, and then we come out and we disseminate. So that's the role of a media. That has to be the role of a media, and nothing more. We should not add anything in that way. Our process is to collect, gather the information, and then come and give it to the larger public. That's our duty. But but yeah we do agree we, uh, i do agree that most of the time we don't just uh, give the disseminate the information what we are actually gathering we are trying to add one or two more thing and then we are we are we are maybe at times we are exaggerating or maybe at times we are filtering it also so uh, how to check the authenticity of news always rely on uh, rely on the mainstream media that you trust that you see that they will not do something they would not um, make something such horrific or such completely wrong so mainstream media rely on mainstream media instead of relying only on whatsapp or any other thing whatsapp or twitter or anything is yeah that is helping even a even a even a common citizen to to share to spread an information from his particular point of time but but that's not just news a news has something more to it because uh, as a journalist as a media there should be more responsibility we can't randomly collect every information and we can't just randomly dis randomly share everything so the job of a media is to check the authenticity of a news that should be our own place because any information that we collect we have to cross check whether that particular information is right before giving to it so it's our duty that we have to uh, we have to uh, be more responsible the information that we give on our name so it's not uh, a per se at the consumer level i don't see any option any way you people can check the authenticity now we are seeing more fact checkers like alt news alt news alternative news is an it's a new platform that has recently uh, come to the limelight where they are checking each and every news that is being uh, put 
uh, on on several media platform in fact even if if they see one news is wrong even if a common citizen finds that this particular information news is wrong from this particular news channel so they are passing this information to this fact checkers and those fact checkers are checking whether this news is right or wrong and then they come up they are coming up with the their own analysis so whenever a, a, a common a citizen whenever anyone uh, find that this whenever they have a doubt on this any news then they can opt for fact checkers and they will uh, give, they will uh, check the authenticity of news thank you sir so the next question is from carolyn sam uh, he he is asking so how can social work professionals collaborate with media and serve the community yeah social work uh, I, i would say that you guys so people who are in the social social work in the who actually spear the social cause these people are the real uh, what i would say and and it, it's it's more than that they they play a very important role in not just for media but for the society in total because even when when this entire rights happened when when even post rights also even in this covid pandemic also we see most of the social workers they are reaching uh to a place where even when when there was a fight between two section uh, in in a in a in a shelter home where the migrants were were accommodated were lodged so it was the social workers who actually uh, who actually went to that particular place because those uh, those migrants those people who have been accommodated who have been lodged there they did not even let the government officials come there because that was a there was a problem there regarding the distribution of foods etc so when people when social workers when people from ngos when they when the when they approached them they started listening to them that's why from them that's why from the from the social workers from the ngos uh, media got to know that this particular entire incident took place in this yamuna vihar that's why if you are seeing uh, post that incident we saw some uh, 500 to 600 of migrant workers uh, uh, thronging the uh, bank, yamuna bank uh, taking a shelter uh, under a bridge because they had an issue with them uh, with the shelter home and then they had to come out it is the social workers who saw this all this migrant workers still uh, 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 lying uh, thronging the yamuna bank and it is from their information that we got to know that more than 400 to 500 migrant workers are, have taken shelter under bridge on the yamuna bank so when we did the story that's when the government saw it, the delhi government saw it, that almost 600 or 700 migrant workers are staying there without uh, with three meals they hardly managing with one meal a day from nearby gurudwara so uh, when when social workers when all these ngos gave us an information we went there we made a news and when we made a news we held we made the government accountable and the government uh, reached there and government took all those migrants from that particular uh, yamuna bank to a nearby shelter home so uh, yeah uh, in, in in cases in 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 period in duration in in events like this pandemic or or any other crisis social workers play a very very important role because people trust you when you say you are from ngo when you have when you have an identity of an of an of a social worker people tend to trust you more people those in crisis people those in the people those in dire need they tend to trust a common a, a, a social worker more than those in power so that's where social workers play a very important role because because you are the bridge between those in dire need in dire uh, dire crisis to the outer world so in that way media and uh, social workers should have a strong collaboration we should have we should be in close uh, touch uh, to to help each other to help the society enter thank you sir the next question is from mr kasturi rangan he wants to know your opinion on the common myth among people that there is an under reporting of the covid 19 cases across the country um okay so regarding the covid 19 cases it's it's a bit more uh, more technical also so i would explain in india health is a state subject health is not a not a, a union subject or not a con- it's not a part of concurrent list also so health is a state subject because health comes under every state department every state department has to look after their own health because health is a state subject but education is not a state, state subject education is is in a concurrent list that's why we saw the entire neat issue though health is a state subject because education is a concurrent subject that's why center government came up with a neat uh, exam so that so only for the differentiation how is a state subject how is a central uh, union concurrent uh, union list uh, so i gave this i came up with this example of neat so uh, regarding the covid the whether or whether the is there any under reporting is it Uh, is the covid numbers are under reported across the state so we have three a uh, setup 
one state governments have their own setup second thing is by icmr icmr indian council for medical research icmr is the nodal agency that is uh, taking it's a nodal agency for testing of covid across the country so icmr as our own icmr has engaged with our over 600 labs including private labs across the country so these labs they the moment they test an individual the moment they get a uh, information about a positive a positive data so uh, it's a real time update all these labs directly they will update the information to icmr portal so that is one way also this the district level or the local level administration will keep in touch with the state government so we have two setup third setup is is from idsp that is integrated disease surveillance program that is under the ministry of health and family welfare even they have a setup so for there is a three way of information gathering and all the three information are put together and then they analyze and then they give up the final figure so that's that's the setup in india as of now that's why even if you could see earlier a month a month ago we saw icmr figures having some 1500 to 2000 cases more than the state figure and also the uh central government figure that is also the health ministry figure so when we asked when we when we did when we did the research we got to know that all the lab the moment lab uh, records a positive case it's a real time information that is being given to icmr but the, on the other hand the moment a lab finds a case they would be passing the information to both the state government and also to the ncdc that is to the idsp only after the fees verification of that particular case physical verification and also the contract tracing that particular case is finalized as a pro, as a proper case so in a larger way because we have a three uh, prong three way of uh, information three way of information a uh, data collection so i would not say uh, we are not sure whether there would be a high huge scale of under reporting yeah there will be a, a way of under reporting in this in the way of saying in, in this process of saying that we are uh, we are confirming on the field whether this is a original whether this is a original case or not but i don't see there is a big there's a huge uh, under reporting when it comes to covid cases but what we are learning from our sources is that that is a bit of under reporting when it comes to covid debt because covid debt is more complicated because most of the state governments they are not reporting the debts with comorbidities as a covid debt they are just reporting only if it is a covid debt only a debt that has only covid as a reason they are uh, they are citing it as a covid debt and all those debt with comorbidities they are not uh, they are not reporting it as a covid debt so that is a problem when it comes to covid debt there is a bit of a, a under reporting and icmr and also all other experts medical bodies including several ngos are trying to are trying to clear this mess also but as on date there is a bit of under reporting when it comes to covid debt but not uh, to that extent when it comes to covid cases thank you sir So the next question is from Ms. Renuka. What do you think is the impact and role of media among youngsters? Okay, uh, role of media among youngsters is that youngsters. It, it's a. I would say uh, youngsters media. The the future of the media rests in the hands of youngsters like us. We have to come out. We have to clear the mess. What the media has done it because media has drifted from its goal from its. Diff- has drifted from its role it has sided towards it has sided with those in power so even in those uh, even in that period again i'm taking the example of delhi rights even that time i saw all those youngsters on the roads without any without any inclination or without any uh, uh, religiously or politically or communally uh, sided with one side they stood on ground they gave a proper reporting even those even their own bosses sitting on their studio saying that no you cannot report this no you should not report this this is against the government you should not report this just confine yourself only to this even even those even with those several restrictions we saw people working in several such restricted environment also coming out in open even on their own social media even on their own platform they are coming out calling out this this entire communally charged this entire violence that is happening there so it shows that even those in power even those all those senior reporters but but i'm not i'm not blaming all the senior journalists i'm not uh, blaming all those reporters with 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 experience i'm 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 speaking about the youngsters because youngsters this time at least what we saw in uh, let's take from the jamia protest let's take the jnu incident let's take the uh, anti citizenship amendment act it's anti citizenship amendment act protest in shahinbagh or in jafarabad or even the delhi rights or even this covid 19 what we are seeing is that only the youngsters are without any fear without any bias they are coming on 
to the field they are reporting though their bosses are trying to trying to filter it trying to set an agenda for the news but the youngsters it has shown the youngsters have shown that no when we when we take over media when we come to the fore we will not let this happen this way we would be standing with the common citizen so in a way it's only when the youngsters come out we can clear the mess what the media has created to themselves and also to the society thank you sir the next question is from jimri samuel uh, he is asking what do you think the migrants who are being harassed would be able to do to turn the table in the next election so yeah migrant so what we are seeing is that there, there was a report uh, from the railway ministry and also from other reports also almost 11 lakh migrant workers have returned to uttar pradesh alone only th- only to one state around 11 lakh migrant workers have returned so as per uh, railway ministry they have run around they have they have they organized around 3000 uh, uh, special trains for the migrant workers even if you put some 1000 so it's somewhere around 30 lakh so so what we are saying is that almost as per as per the as per the economic survey 2017 economic survey almost uh, there are 7 to 8 crore migrant workers that's again a rough estimate so almost out of 8 uh, crore migrant workers Uh, the the documented information that what we have is almost 30 to 40 lakh migrant workers have been relocated to their own state have come to their own state with majority in uttar pradesh so uttar pradesh is the big state that would be going for elections in 2022 so uttar pradesh will be the big state also bihar bihar elections we we will be seeing bihar elections late this year so again bihar is again one underdeveloped state where most of the people from bihar they go out of the state looking for jobs looking for their own livelihood so even some amount of migrant workers have come to bihar but majority of the migrant workers who have been relocated are are, are from uttar pradesh so migrant workers again uh, i i don't see a direct relation with with elections and with with migrant workers because uh, migrant workers do constitute uh, do constitute a, a, a chunk of a vote bank but their vote bank is not concentrated it it's more scattered because a migrant worker who has been in tamil nadu who has returned to uttar pradesh post this pandemic we are not sure whether he is a uh, he has a vote in uttar pradesh or he has a vote in tamil nadu because all this scattered all this migrant workers they do, they do they do have vote right but their votes are not concentrated they are mostly uh, scattered so a uh, uh, migrant worker who has been in tamil nadu for last 10 15 years might not have a voting right in uttar pradesh he might not have a voting what what right he card in uttar pradesh so he would not have registered himself in uttar pradesh so he his votes will not play a big role when it comes to uttar pradesh election because he is not in tamil nadu also he can't even exercise his vote in uh, tamil nadu so migrant workers in that way in that way it's, it's a big of a disadvantage so it, it I, i don't see it would have a direct much of an impact when it comes to elections again uh, like i have been speaking like i have been telling all this why the real issues elections uh, real issues having a, a re- real issues being a deciding factor on elections Are, are foregone. We have we have shifted from real issues from uh, during the elections to more towards uh, one. We, we are more, almost Indian elections are happening this India versus Pakistan. So we, you speak anything about Pakistan, you get votes in India. So that's how most of the North Indian elections are happening. So in a way, in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, I don't see migrant uh, voters having a big impact. But we have to wait and see. But in Tamil Nadu, uh, a state where but we don't see much of a communal or any other angle playing a big role in tamil nadu elections and elections in tamil nadu or kerala which we are seeing in 2021 that the migrant workers or the economic activity or the adverse impact on lockdown will have some effect when it comes to states like tamil nadu kerala or, or to an extent all the developed state like even like maharashtra thank you sir uh, next question is from mr armugam k he states that media has helped ordinary people to attend their justice but nowadays people are thinking news media became business for powerful people he wants to don't know your opinion on this yeah with uh, hanging my head in shame i would agree to her that what he is saying is right because 
media's role media's job is just to amplify the voice of a voiceless our job is not to be a amplifier though for those in power because they have their own platform for for those in power they have their own for for them they have their own media they don't do this in their own government platform they they have their own options for setting their own narrative but as a job of an independent media is to hold those people in power but we are not as media i would agree i would completely put my head in shame and i would say that yeah we are not doing our job we are not doing just to our profession instead of standing with the migrant worker in fact what the media should be discussing now media should have come out of their own studios all those big anchors should have been standing right next to the migrant workers they should have been questioning the government how did you announce a lockdown without even thinking this when you are announcing a lockdown for 60 odd days did you think that this migrant laborers who who are daily wages who are looking for who are, who are who who are satisfying themselves with only with, with their own day to day earnings can they cope up can they survive with the 60 days lockdown no there was no thought that there was no thinking process that was put before announcing the lockdown randomly we announced the lockdown how we announced demonetization we did not even think that those in power did not even think what the adverse impact this would have on all those migrant workers all those uh, all those people in that vulnerable strata but alas media instead of doing that instead of standing with the migrants they are standing most of the media are standing with those in power still making news still making news story saying that government has done this done that done this they are saying that 3000 trains railways have arranged 3000 trains yeah completely agree but we also heard that around out of 3000 trains 40 train instead of going to x destination it has it went to y destination and we are seeing reports that even in those trains people are traveling without food for last 18 years for 17 hours 18 20 hours without food only one meal at the start of the journey they are being given food till the end of the journey for 20 hour hours they are not given food so instead of questioning all that still media is reporting that government has arranged 3000 trains government has done this government has done that yeah at a time instead of standing on the roads we are still trying to sit in an ac room trying to give a a, a mock image of what's what's the reality thank you sir that was a real answer uh, the next question is from ms jayanti lakshmana swami uh, from a common man's perspective what is your opinion about reliability of news provided in different channels and how do we decide on what channel to be followed so what channel one should follow is because i'm a stakeholder i belong to a channel so i can i i can't say that you should stick to this particular channel but with the way they deliver a news with the way they they publish a news they they share a news any common person can understand and whether that news is being uh, whether it's a concocted news or whether they are trying to sensationalize a uh, A, a topic or a, or an event so uh, it it it's it's up to the consumer you have to see you have to try, you you have to analyze you have to sit and see whether this particular news is right or wrong because as a person as i belong to a news channel i cannot say that you have to uh, rely on this particular channel or any other channel but one thing how media works i would be because i have been in this field for 7 years so i would say how a media work so it's like this if if one channel if they publish a news so all the channels they try to copy the same news i i don't mean that they copy the same news the moment like it's it's a competitive world even like how it's the same in every profession so even we every news studio every news channel office will have almost 30 news channels so all the 30 tvs with 30 different news channels on their screen the moment they see one channel uh, reporting on an even and and they see that their channel has not reported it they would send the uh, uh, reporters for the same news it's it's like a shared community we we tend to follow the same news so one setting the agenda and all other people are doing the same agenda that's why it has become more easy for the government they are just is giving one agenda one piece of an information to their own pro government channel and that government channel uh, that pro government channel is setting the agenda almost all other channels are following the same route so that's how most of the channels are working uh, in tamil nadu i would say uh, I, i i don't see much of a in because i had worked in tamil news channel also for for most of the 7 6 plus odd years so i i had worked in tanti for some 4.5 to 5 years so i would say uh, in tamil news channel i don't see much of a political inter- political uh, intervention or political pressure in news channel but if you could see in national media we would see 
mostly every agenda that is being said on most of the channels are being dictated by the government because they know that th they want this agenda to be set on this particular day they would leak this information to their own uh, pro government channels and those channels will set the agenda but in that way tamil nadu i would still say tamil channels are far better when it, when you compare themselves with national channels thank you sir so the next question is from ms n dalalakshmi she asked do you think messages from news media will create an impact of behavioral change in mass audience if so how do you think the message should be conveyed so uh, for this i would take an example of tamil tamil nadu not just this present uh, covid or this present new media or anything i would say not just news media media in, uh, in per se so i would say if you could see uh, uh, tamil nadu is a very progressive state so you can give the credits to dravidian politics you can give the credits to dravidian ideology or to anything else but i would say media also played a very important role for the progressive for the progressive nature of uh, for the progressive nature that what we are seeing in tamil nadu you can compare tamil nadu with any other state even at this particular even at, during this area during this period of of development of of rooftop development state of art development everything still i would give one bad example you see anyone in any north india they have their caste name behind their name you you take of choudhrys you take of Uh, banerjee's you take off man and even in kerala you take off reddy's even in andhra everywhere that you could see people having their caste name right next to their name but only in tamil nadu for my my grandfather had had a caste name right next to his name at the end of his name but my father from my father's generation we don't have a caste name right next to our name because the dravidian ideology we 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 made people aware that there is no need of there was no need for anyone to boast their own cast to boast their own identities so in that way media played an important role most of those movies most of those uh, not just movies all those even the newspapers all those things that came during those uh, the peak of dravidian era that helped people to come out of this habit of uh, of a uh, cast uh, boasting of the identity boasting they came out so in that way media did help uh, media did help the uh, good of a uh, dravidian ideology reach masses and that's why what we are seeing as a result here so media can also play a positive role they can also help uh, um, uh, 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 they can also uh, make a, a good impact when it comes to the uh, mass like what we are seeing is that almost all this mass uh, people should wear mask people should uh, follow social distancing almost all this are being uh, done by media only so when media when media passes an information toto without without adding any more without exaggerating or without doing anything from their side people tend to listen carefully to media and they and they believe it also and they follow it also so that's why we see whenever we say that whenever media says that no today it will be it will be a downpour people they don't come out they they do uh, stick to their own home so in way media can even now media can make that change but for that media has to play its role media has to stick to its role only then people will believe people will follow media thank you sir so the next question is from ms ankita subramanian she wants to know how can bias news telecast be avoided as more as there is a section of population that rely on the news channels for their primary information and also how can the news channels not put pressure put pressure on the government to take up a united approach towards covid uh, news channels putting pressure on government i don't see at least any time in next few years because it's it's vice versa what's happening is that government is putting pressure on media government is government has all those people in power in the recent time in the recent period what we are seeing is that all those people in power they have opted this divide and rule policy they divide even for election they divide a society and they and they get the political dividend and they get the political dividend same way in media also they have divided pro government channel and um, all those channel that are pro government are news channels according to them all those channels those question a uh, government are anti national so they are they made a clear demarcation of government uh, of nationalist and anti national so uh, channels news media all those news media coming together and putting a pressure on government i don't see anything happening so that's a stark reality we have to 
uh, accept that unless and until people come together unless and until people question the government i don't see media doing that media that's the job of media but sadly media is not doing that so unless and until it comes from the down it comes from the bottom it's come it comes from the common people i don't see media putting a pressure on the government in fact media media should have been questioning media should be questioning the government regarding the economic package though the government says that we have given 20 lakh crore economic package which is of 10% gdp but the stark reality is that our economic package is hardly 1% of the gdp though 20 lakh crore economic package has been announced out of this 20 lakh crore hardly uh, two point uh, uh, that's our both experts differ somewhere around 50000 crore somewhere but hardly what they are saying is that the only fiscal spending the only economic package that has been given by the government is hardly 2.5 lakh crore that is only 1% of the gdp whereas government is claiming that we have done we have given a 20 lakh crore economic package so when media is not even ready to question that that's the that that's that's like fooling everyone here when media is not even ready to question that i don't see media putting any pressure on that but even when media refuses to raise all those uh, uncomfortable questions all those uh, a strong question a difficult question to the government now even every commoner can sit they can sit with their own agenda they have their own mobile phone they have their own twitter they have their own social media come out you start questioning it start controlling the media it, it's a time we all have to come together this is the high time because india is at a society india as a society the whole is at a worst it's a, it's, a, it's a worst period so we all have to take responsibility we all should come together and say that no we all want there is no need of all this divisive and all this poisonous any more agenda will not be allowed so unless until we come together i don't see one particular section or one particular uh, proposition uh, making a much of a change thank you sir due to the time constraint uh, here we have our last question for the session uh, this question is from professor sai sujata she wants to know how the media can have a role in preventing the spread of false information so to prevent uh, false information first the only if a common man thinks the only if a common man trust media organization only if he trust if he or she trust media organization then they would rely only on media t mainstream channels for news information instead of relying on whatsapp because nowadays most of the uh, 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 most of the fake news are being spread only mostly through majorly through uh, whatsapp and in fact there is a there is an organized setup being uh, done by not just one political party in power mostly many other political parties are also opting the same uh, same strategy they are spreading uh, false uh, fake narrative through whatsapp and uh, through that they are making people they are even getting a political dividend on that also so unless and until a common man trust social uh, trust a uh, mainstream media he will not get out of he or she will not get out of social media so for that media has to uh, get it image clear they have to they have to uh, reimage themselves reimage themselves and then come back as a credible voice of of original of of true news and information so unless until media does that i don't see media has any role in uh, create any role in curbing the fake news because alas most of the time even media does uh, most of the fake news narrative that is being done by the government or that is being done by one political party or the other one so in a way it's again it's, it's a, it, it should be a collective responsibility that we all should uh, stick to a point that we will not be fooled by fake narratives we will not be fooled by agenda setters we know what's happening we will not fall prey to all this narrative only if it starts from common man yeah media do have a, a responsibility that we also will give only confirm news we we will do a proper confirmation before disseminating news but it it because media situation media is in a very pathetic uh, condition again we have to rely on the common man like if you want to clear the mess you have to start the clearing the mess from the media thank you sir this was a honest and informative section i request you to give the closing remarks for the session so it was a great uh, uh, opportunity for me because i don't have much of an experience when first janaki ma'am when he, when she approached me uh, asking me to give a message to uh, all the young minds uh, from the uh, from um, madras school of social works i did tell her i was very reluctant i told her ma'am i don't see myself 
as 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 anyone who could speak to all this all this young smart minds i did tell her i was very reluctant i am not sure whether i am a right person but i asked her why can't i suggest some other names who have made who have made their own mark in this industry but she said that no i should speak so it was great so i would thank uh i it, i i would fail my duty if i don't thank madras school of social works for giving this uh, a wonderful opportunity to speak to those uh, and wonderful minds so my one particular point like i have been reiterating please it, it it's it's a society we all it, it's our collective responsibility though things are worse outside but we all should come together we all should stick to uh, one we all should stick a whole united we stand divided we fall so let's stick together let's bring a change in the society though covid is a pandemic we will stick together we will fight this covid virus not just this covid virus and also other communal and also other uh, any other poisonous virus that's that will come in the way